Good afternoon. I thought I'd do a video because I'm too lazy to write, so Shane's going to do the writing. But he keeps asking me where we went. He went there, but he doesn't remember. What's the first one we went to? <laughs> Was it like Kendleton, Kendleton Hall? So, after the ferry ride across from... Uh, from... Kendleton. 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 So after the ferry ride across, we drove across Northern Wales, which was really pretty, through the, past the Snowdonia Mountains along the coast. Saw some pretty impressive uh, ocean wind farms, and so just some beautiful little villages. And then when we we hit the border, instead of heading towards Chester, we went up to Warrington, where I picked up my registration papers, my no, my new license, my British license um, which is 10 years and it cost me a lot less than an Australian license anyway then we we had some vehicle problems which we we know about they're not new um, and we're, we're nursing her she's she's growing on me but we're nursing her because the radiators fucked and we did find one randomly. We went to a place yesterday. Was that yesterday, Shane? Yesterday morning we found one, which is great. The problem is getting it installed because it's not like Australia where you can just go up to the local garage and they'll just put do anything to your car. So that'll, that's our uh, goal is to get that new radiator in. Uh, we've been running... So basically yesterday, all we did the evening before and yesterday morning was run around to to car places and mechanics and uh, we had we had the, all the tyres balanced and checked and they're all good because there was a bit of a shudder when we hit a certain speed but that seems to have been partially alleviated um, the brakes all look great because when the wheels are off Shane's under there with the bloody tyre guy checking everything and it all looks good so it's basically just uh, that fucking radiator there might be something, he's a bit worried about the cam belt, but he needs to order one somewhere so it can be delivered to somewhere so we can pick it up and then we can have that installed, but uh, have you done that yet? No. Okay. So they're about the main concerns, but the radiator is the big one, so we've been nursing her. I haven't driven it because, you know, he's nursing her to make sure that we don't overheat, or so he's putting this, like, you pour this shit into the radiator and it plugs up the holes. Uh, so we're using that and, and topping up the uh, coolant just to make sure that she, she hasn't gone overheated or anything. So, But it could go at any time. Uh, but we have the radiator, so if worse comes to worse, Shane thinks he could do it himself, but preferably we get someone else to do it. Anyway, getting back to where we've been. So... We're worried on because uh, they're lazy asses here and they don't want to work on Friday, so we decided we might as well do some touring rather than just sit around all day and do nothing. So Friday we headed off south from Warrington. Warrington is about halfway between Liverpool and and Manchester, so we headed south from there down to a place called the Jodrell Observatory. It's a World Heritage listed site. It's got a big. They're like um, what are they? They're like electronic telescopes, aren't they? They're not... Radio telescopes. Radio, it's got a huge radio telescope there. Like and, the Parks dish. Yeah, like Similar. the one in... Where is that? Is this in Canberra Parks. or is Canberra? Parks. Yeah. So, we went there first. It was shut. It's been shut for a month and it was opening today. And it wasn't open yesterday. So, we took a few pictures from a distance, you know. Chilled out a bit. And then we headed uh, east into the Peak District, which is a World Heritage Listed National Park. And really, very beautiful. Uh, we went to some really pretty little towns in the region, like Buxton and... Um, what was that one named after a pie? Remember the one? The cake. Oh, Bakewell. Bakewell. Uh, just really pretty little towns with really... Um, and, the, and the scenery in the area was, was gorgeous as well, so... It was pleasant to drive through there, and we stopped at a place called, um, oh, fuck, it's a ducal palace, and it's just stunning, like, it's got this beautiful arch bridge leading in, um, 
Do you know the name of that place? No. I can't remember the name of it either. Anyway. So we went there first. It was pretty cool. And then we went to another place after that. Um, another, like, uh, country hall. This place was... Um, again, it was owned by the Duke's family. The Duke of Derbyshire. We're in Derbyshire. And it was... Um, Hackworth. Was it Hackworth Hall? We went there this morning. Yesterday. Hackworth Hall. It was uh, a little bit different. It, what happened is this um, this woman married a, a dude. He died. She married him when he was 13 and she was 15. Um, and then he died. And then she then got married again at 19. Um, to this old bloke. Like 25 years older. Uh, after 10 years and, and seven children, eight children, two which died in infancy, he died. So at 29, she had eight children, six children and a lot of wealth after, and a title. She got the, the title from him, a baron, baronet, baron, baron, whatever. And then she married another guy, a young soldier. Who she, I think she probably loved that one, but he got killed. Um, then she married another older bloke, uh, but by this stage she was, um, so that was one year, she would have been 30, so when she married the other guy, when he died, she was nearly 40, so there's four dead, right, and she was like 60 years old, but she had buckets of money, so what she did is she ripped down, she had this perfectly great house, and she, she built a new house, and she kept all the servants and guests in the other house, but that's gone to, to ruin now. But the, the current house was really quite attractive. How long have I been talking? That's not too bad. And so we went there. And then we were planning to go to uh, a, uh, an abbey. But it was getting too late in the day. You've got to, we didn't start till after midday yesterday and again today. If you, You've got to start at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Because everything shuts at 4. So it's late in the season. Well, the weather is, you know, pretty nice today, but it can, it can be rainy for half the day. So we then, um, we got back in our van and we, we headed to a caravan park, which was pretty impressive, pretty cool. Had its own bar and like restaurant and, you know, pretty good. And and I was just talking, Shane and I were talking to a guy there last night and there's people that go there every weekend and they just live there on the weekends. It's like strange to me. But uh, not to them. And that was pretty cool. So we had some beers there and a meal, which was pretty good last night. First night I slept in the van, I found it a bit uh, weird and a, and a bit uh, claustrophobic. But last night was fine. So I think I'm up. I'm cool with it now. Shane tried to sleep on that little fucking the cross bed that we built at the top. But it's like, you got to cut his legs off to fit up there. So he's, he's sleeping on the floor now, which is, he says is very comfortable. It's flat, so I suppose it is very comfortable. That's excellent. Yeah, you're happy. So, so this morning, uh, yesterday we bought some batteries and stuff. So now we have full time power in the van all day. The fridge is running all day. We have cold drinks. We have co we have, you know, everything's great. Um, but he took him an hour and a half to do that this morning while I was waiting forever for my breakfast. So that was the reason we had a late start today. Um, so after we did head off, we went into Kendall. Kennelton Hall first, which is, it's built on, that. it's incredible actually, because you, you walk in through the, the Caesar room, which has got all these busts of um, various Caesars, Roman Caesars, and then you go into the, the marble room, the marble entrance, which is stunningly beautiful, and, and then you go through the, you go around the side of the, out to the back of that room, because they won't let you walk straight through the middle, and then you got this big like a uh, domed room with a light on the top i mean a win like a window thing on top and it's just beautiful and it was really it was really worth seeing stunning and and the 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 what were they were they earls or barons or i don't know what they were but they were uh like they had like penis envy they wanted to be like the duke so they built the same bridge out the front and had sheep running around the fields and but uh, the, the house itself is, is was stunning and and these houses have all been 
own, they're all owned by the National Trust because clearly these lords and stuff couldn't afford the death tax, so they ended up giving them over so they could avoid the tax. And uh, and after that, we went to where? Oh, we went to Derby. It's a pretty little town with a, a nice cathedral, small, small compared to most of the ones I've seen in England, but a nice cathedral. And I had a quick look there, had a one down the street. This, it's because, but it was like two, it was after two then, so the day was almost gone. So we had to make a decision to, to move. Otherwise, it, Derby would be a nice place to stay. Uh, and then we headed on to Cork, Cork um, Abbey. It's not, it was never an abbey, it was a priory. Um, and it's up on, up on the hill behind the house. Now, this one was interesting because. When the people ran out of money and handed it over to the English government, to the to the trust, uh, they decided to leave it as it was. So the house had been going downhill for you know a hundred years. What's the name of it? Cork Abbey. Cork Abbey. Cool. So been going downhill for about a hundred years. So it, it, and they left it the way it was when the old man that lived there died in ninety one. Um, had a history of. What, three centuries or something, but they left it as it was. So they, they they keep they've restored it to a certain extent that they it, if anything goes wrong they fix it, but they don't they haven't right repainted and redone the whole place except for one room that gave us an example of what it once looked like. That was a beautiful room, right? A dining room. The rest of the place is left how it was. You've got all and the, the shit those people collected. It was full of stuffed animals and apparently they sold off a huge 90 percent of those animals like 100 years ago but it was still full of stuffed animals and like just knickknacks and shit and that the, the, the dying the last lord wouldn't sell any of that shit off so it's still there and it's uh it's got big stables and i had a like the lord there didn't want to see staff if he saw them they had to turn their back not to to look at him so he was a bit of a whacker but he had all these underground tunnels built out to the brewery and out to the stable so that he never had to see any of the staff. So, and he would fire them. If he saw them in the house after a certain time of the day, he would fire them. So, just a nut job. Um, but still, it was, a, it was an interesting place to see because it's the only one in England that hasn't been restored. It's in its dilapidated state, but it's, it's kind of looked good because of that. Okay, so after that... Um, you know, the day's running out, so we went, tried to go to the Battle of Bosworth site where Richard III uh, was killed. Um, he was the one that supposedly, well, most people believe he did murder his his brother's kids. They kept them in the, in the Tower of London and they just disappeared and they think that he murdered them. Uh, he was the last of the Tudors, I believe, and he was removed. I think it was Edward. I, this is just from memory, but... He was removed by Edward, who was killed him at that battle, and uh, started the current royal family line. Well, I don't even know what they're called, the Windsors. I don't know what the fuck they're called. There's a there's a, there's another name for it. So we went there, and it was shut. So we just found a caravan park nearby. We're staying in caravan parks. It's twenty five to thirty five pounds a night between us. is is great, right? It's a pittance. Um. So we're sitting here now, chilling out. We've been here three days, and we haven't set foot in a British pub. We've, walked, we've driven past about 900 of them, but we haven't set foot in one. So we're going to just chill here for a little while, and then we're going to head down to the pub. Uh, it's apparently this uh, Mark Up Bosworth has six pubs or something, so one of them's bound to take our eye. Okay, so that's it for the first three days. Have I missed anything? Have I missed anything? Probably. What? I don't know. What have I missed? I got I got stuff in my sock. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's the, he's, he's cleaned his sock out, and I haven't worn any underwear today because uh, Shane wouldn't get out of the caravan, so I could change my underwear. So I'm, I just didn't bother. I've been flanging free all day long, so it's great. All right, that's it for today. Quickly tomorrow, we're going to go back to the Battle of Bosworth. We're going to go into Leicester to have a look at the bones of the king. And the, and the information centre where they dug his body out of the car park. Then we're going to Coventry to look at the Automobile Museum and then uh, Stratford-on-Avon to see if we can find Shakespeare. And then we're hopefully, with a little luck, we'll finish the day early in uh, 
the fuck's that place called? Ox not opposite to Oxford. Cambridge. Cambridge. So hopefully we'll finish the day in Cambridge. That's as far south as we're going. After that, we're heading up north, all the way up the northeast to Northumbria. Okay, goodbye, ciao, and uh, I hope I haven't bored you too much.